Harbor. Wonder Lake Security Senior Vice President Matthew Harrigan follows the media industry and Comcast as well, and he joins us now uh, from Denver, Colorado. And uh, great to have you with us, Matthew. Oh, thank you. Okay, so your reaction to these results, because uh, I wonder, I was combing through sort of these numbers. We had pretty good customer additions. I want to tackle that first, because that's obviously very important to Comcast. Uh, these customer additions, are they at the cost of anything else? Uh, you know, did it slice into revenue, though, for Comcast? Could they could have been higher? You know, I, I think they look very carefully at the trade-off between uh, revenue generating unit additions and, and pricing. Yeah, I wouldn't say that they were overly promotional on, on, on pricing. It may have uh, come in, you know, just a touch. But I think when you look at the return on investment on these incremental subscribers in, in this soft macro economy and the, and the competitive environment, it's an excellent uh, result for the quarter. Okay, but take the cash flow though, declining by 11.1 percent in this quarter. Something that we're going to see throughout this year. Well, it was really just a function of the acceleration of some capital spending into uh, Q4. At that point, they didn't realize that the bonus depreciation uh, allowance on the tax code, you know, might be continued into the next year. And they also had some excellent, you know, vendor financing. So I certainly wouldn't extrapolate from Q4. You know, I think in aggregate for the year, you had about an 11 percent, 10 percent free cash flow yield and where the stock is at right now. And, and that should actually improve perhaps a couple hundred basis points in 2010 as the CapEx uh, comes in further, you know, really as the company uh, winds down its 100 megabit, uh, you know, plus uh, internet speed deployment and, and also its all digital initiative. Okay. And all, all right. Well, then let's move on to what a lot of people are watching, of course, which is the absorption of NBC Universal into Comcast. Then uh, overall, these numbers, what is it going to mean uh, to these numbers uh, as we start seeing Comcast uh, bring in NBC Universal? Well, NBC Universal is a very interesting deal. I mean, Comcast has been a brilliant uh, horizontal integrator of acquired cable systems in the past. You know, this is really a different animal, an integrated uh, media company, a studio, and a broadcast network. And you know, really, you can come pretty close to justifying the purchase price just in the basis of the cable networks, the uh, you know, USA, you know, CNBC, MSNBC, et cetera. Right. You know, the issue is both the Universal Studio and the NBC network are really having issues right now. And that's really a new business to, to Comcast. I mean, they're, they're creative businesses that can require, you know, fairly heavy, you know, cash burn to turn around. So I think the blocking and tackling on the plain vanilla, you know, cable business, you know, Comcast bread and butter, is, is pretty evident. I think the cable network business is, is predictable. They know how to manage that business. You know, the issue is, what do you do with a, a studio and a broadcast with the network content. that's really in the doldrums? Right, with, exactly. with the, with, with the content. Around. Right, and that's new territory for Comcast, but also new territory for the content providers to Comcast. And I was talking to um, Philippe Dolmon, the CEO of Viacom, uh, and we were discussing, you know, how is it going to change? Let's say the next time they go to the nego negotiating table, right? Uh, Comcast now has also got content. How does it change the game for companies like Viacom that provide the content? Yeah, I think that there are so many distribution conduits in, in, in the world now. You know, we talked a little bit about Fios and Uverse from Verizon and, and AT&T, as well as the satellite companies. And, you know, Comcast, you know, certainly is, is, a, is a major player. But I, I think between the realities in the marketplace and, and the controls that will undoubtedly be put on the company by the government uh, when the merger is approved, it, it's pretty unlikely that uh, it's going to have that, you know, significant a fallout. I think the more interesting you know, aspect of everything is is how the you know the interplay w w with Google and uh, you know video on the web you know goes as opposed to the traditional uh, you know fee negotiations on, on carriage and such. I think that's the more interesting uh, angle, and that that's, there's a lot more that could happen on a speculative basis there.